Blog Talk Radio. Ye zem ara loom. I mean, you hoon, you hoon, you hoon, you hoon, you hoon, you hoon, you hoon.
sense that acceptable year of Yahweh, he who be, who he be, is thy divine majesty in 1930, with the coronation of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Moa An Besazem Negeri Yehuda Kedamawi, Haile Salase, Siyume Egziavi Her Negusa Neges, Ze Ethiopia, the elect of Egziavi Her, the sustainer Yahweh, he who be, who he be, his divine majesty in. Addis Ababa, New Flower, Ethiopia, Tobia, the good land to I and I, Rastafari, the holy city of peace, the true new Jerusalem in spirit and in truth, Mount Zion. I and I, Rastafari, are to partake or moreover full receive and therefore full take as sons and daughters as brothers and sisters as princes and princesses as kings and queens as representatives as ambassadors of Christ in his kingly character of the seed of Israel to all who hail who Salamta, who bring true, peaceful, shalomful greetings in the name, the new name of Ras Tefari Kadamawi Haile Selassie. This is a uh, allegiance to edification, uh, iritical spiritual adoption, son and daughtership in the royal, the kingly, the Nugusawi family name the new name of Ras Tafari, as living irit in flesh, overcoming hell, death, and the grave through I and I, Adonai, Yeshua, I, I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hail Ras Tafari. Hail Adonai, Ja Ras Tafari. Hail Adonai, Ja Ras Tafari. Hail Adonai, Ja Rastafari, in the name of Yeshua, HaMoshiach. So Yeshua, Shalom, to I and I, brothers and sisters that receive Shalom and who are of Yeshua, Shalom, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah incarnate in this millennium. Awo, awo. So that's a greetings at the top of the show, and I and I, I and I are hosts, I'll say the, the, the the host is not here, but I and I is sitting in for the host. Well, we all are hosting because Jai is I and I. You know, Jai is the guest. <laughs> you know what I mean? He is that guest. You know what I mean? They guess, but we know he be who he be, his divine majesty. So a couple of more couple more tunes before we get into this particular Torah portion, this double portion, which concluding, which concludes actually the reading in this particular season, right? In this particular season, um, 2015, in this uh, Shemitah year, in this um, year of release, and um, there's so much to, you know, so many things to say right now. There's so much things to say, but as Burhan Salasi. Bob Marley said in one of the tunes from Bob Marley and the Whalers, so we don't want to forget the brothers, you know, and the sisters who supported I and I, brother, you know, and being that Joseph and being that spearhead. He said, you know, life is one big road with lots of signs. And when we're riding through the, the rough or the ruts, not to complicate I and I mind free from Hate, deceit, and jealousy. Don't bury I and I thought. Don't bury the vision of His Majesty. You know, I and I, right there, just inspired, right there, just to add a word for this particular season. Yes, I. So, um, behind the scenes here on the, you know, on the board, this Blog Talk Radio. This is Blog Talk Radio that we're utilizing as a means of communication. So sometimes there are little delays here and there, and most of the I then who regularly you. Faithfully, you know, come in and attend and fellowship with I and I and gather um, on the ear and in the iret, in the iret of the King of Kings through Yeshua HaMoshiach. 
already understand that, but others who might be listening in for the first time, you know, that's one of the reasons right here. We're using these particular technology, technology, but through the King of Kings and his Christ, everything will be all right. So um, I'm going a, I'm to a, um, play a couple more tunes, having a little difficulty here on the board, I wanted to actually bring in um, – Burhana Selassie. Selassie is the chapel and the brothers, I and I, co-laborers in this ministry. Oh, oh, oh. Koi, koi, Wait, please. Yes, I. Yes, I. Coming in once again. Um, this is uh, the double portion of the Torah portion reading, concluding the book of uh, Exodus. Um, and I'm still having a little bit of trouble on the board right here, but give thanks to the Wendem Moch, to Ayerson, Wendem Ayerson, and Wendem Yifti, who are assisting I and I, you know, in this uh, this presentation for the reading and the feeding, as we are beginning a new book um, simultaneously. You know, it's like the hand of the hand of Jacob, Jacob upon the heel of Esau. So this is the Saturday evening, as we all know. But it's also um, in the overstanding, it's also um, really Ehud, which is the first day. So we're beginning a, a new in a new book, a new chapter, you know, in I and I, in I and I pride, in I and I tradition. So because of some of the the difficulties on the board, you know, um, I might have to restart, you know, my my computer. So I'm just making this known and everything because I'm not able to even link with ones and ones in the background. So I'm just bringing this to the foreground because um, it's not a secret thing, but it's something that we would be able to take care of usually, you know, like that so that I them can just enjoy, you know, the presentation um, of the dissemination that we are seeking to bring forward. But what I'm going to do, I was looking for, but there's a particular track, I think exactly which track it is, but I can't even get to it right now, where the INRI, you know, INRI, um, some say that's what was written on the on, on top of the cross, right, of our Savior, Moshia, right, and it was basically Isis, Nazare- Nazarenos, uh, Rex, um, Ayude or Ayuda or you know Jesus uh, of Nazareth, um, a king of the Jews. Now, in Rastafari, in the Revelation of Rastafari, the I N R I has been seen by those who can behold it and receive it as I Negus rules Ethiopia rules Israel. But we know that prophecy says in Amos nine and seven, Are ye not as the Children of the Ethiopians, the Bene Kushim, unto me, O Bene Israel. And we already seen in the previous uh, Torah portion reading and feeding with the golden calf that when they had um, fell off so quickly, um, Yahweh was going to destroy them and make a great nation out of Moses. So we can see that uh, the royal order of the Hebrews or the blameless Ethiopians, right? Ethiopia, Israel was already in I and I Father's heart and mind from such a time. So anyway, I want to read through this, you know, as a prayer, the credo. I think it's very important for I and I to, you know, to maintain foundation with those of our patriarchs and matriarchs and the first proclaimers, the true and the faithful, the Kedusan, the Kedoshim, the saints. Right of Rastafari that went before the Isla ones, as we would say, the Isla ones of Rastafari that went before. So I'm gonna go through this right here, brothers and sisters. This is the I N R I International Credo, right? I Nigus rules Ethiopia Israel. So besama av welid will manifest kedus ahadu amlag glory be. To I and I, Father, Abinu, Avinu, Shabashamayim, to Abatachin, and to the Son of Creation, as Jah, as Yah, in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, Jah world without end. So hail Eloheinu, Salasiai, Yahweh Elohim, 
Adonai, Ja Rastafari, El Shaddai, Almighty God, Ja Rastafari, Great and Terrible Elohim. Adonai, Ja Rastafari, Ayanai, El Shaddai, Ja who is seated in Zion, reigns and rules in the hearts of all flesh. O thou, most high, El Elyon, eternal, Ab, Yahweh Elohim, Adonai, Ja, Rastafari, hear us and bless us, hear I and I and bless I and I, Abitu, Father, his Father, Father of the house, keep I and I, the I children, in Yeshua's name, so I and I shall be saved and redeemed, O thou, the I, El Elyon, Elohim, Adonai, Ja, Rastafari, Most High, El Elyon, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah, Elect of God, Light of this world, His own Ivine Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie, I first, Kedemawi, Haile Selassie, Ancient King, Melchizedek, King of Iration, King Alpha and Queen Omega, beginning without end, first without last, protectorate of all human faith and ruler of the universe. So hail Eloheinu, I and I power, Selassie, I, Adonai, Ja, Rastafari, Almighty God, El Shaddai, Adonai, Ja, Rastafari, great and terrible Elohim, Ja, Rastafari, I and I, El Shaddai. Ja, who is seated in Zion, reigns in the hearts of all flesh. O thou, most high, eternal Abba, Yahweh Elohim, Adonai, hear I and I, and bless I and I. O Adonai, Keep I and I and sanctify I and I all. Cause thine holy face to shine upon I and I, the I children, so I and I shall be saved and redeemed. O Most High, El Elyon, Elohim, Adonai, Rastafari. Princes and princesses, Shall come out of Egypt, I and I, Ethiopians, blameless Ethiopians in the true faith, stretch I and I hands and hearts to the true power, O oh, the I, power, true power, true father of blameless Ethiopia, his own Ivine majesty, the I spirit. The Memphis Caduce, the Isla Iris, the Ruach HaKodesh comes to all dwelling in the path of righteousness, in the way, the truth, and life of Adonai, Yeshua, Hamushiai, Geta, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, Christ in his kingly character. Lead I and I, help I and I to forgive that I and I might be forgiven. Teach I and I love and loyalty on earth as is in Zion. Endow I and I with the I wisma, with the I wisdom, knowledge and overstanding to do the I will. Thy blessing be upon I and I, that the hungry be fed, the naked clothed, the sick nourished, the age protected, and infants cared for. Deliver I and I from the hands of I and I enemies, those who seek the end of I and I and we, that I and I and we shall be fruitful in these last days when I and I enemies have passed and decayed in the depths of the seas and in the, in the earth and in the bowels of a beast, or in the lake of fire. Oh, give I and I all a place in the eye king man, in the eye government, forever. So hail, 
Eloheinu Selassiei, Yahweh Elohim, Adonai Ja Rastafari. El Shaddai, Almighty God, Adonai Rastafari. Great and terrible Elohim, Adonai Ja Rastafari is I and I, El Shaddai. Ja, who is seated in Zion and reigns in the hearts of all righteous and redeemed flesh. O Most High, Eternal Abba, Yahweh Elohim, cause thy Isla face to shine upon I and I, the I children, so I and I shall be saved and redeemed. O thou Most High God, Ja, Rastafari, as I and I lift up I and I eyes to the hills, from whence cometh I and I help? I and I help cometh from Yahweh, he who be, who he be, his divine majesty, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, who made Zion and earth. Jah will not suffer I and I feet to be moved. He that keepeth I and I shall not slumber. Behold, look and see. He that keepeth redeemed Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Yahweh. Jah's way is I and I keeper. Yahweh, Jah's way is the shade upon I and I right hand. By Jah's way, his protection, I protection, the sun shall not smite I and I by day, nor the moon by night. Jahweh shall preserve I and I going out and I and I coming in from this Iowa forward. And hence, and even for evermore. So, hail, salamta, shalom to I and I, Elohim, Selassiei, Jah, Rastafari, El Shaddai, Jah, Rastafari, great and terrible Elohim, Adonai, Jah, Rastafari, is I and I, El Shaddai, Jah who is seated in Isla Mount Zion and reigns in parts of all redeemed flesh. O the I, El Elyon, Eternal Abba, Yahweh, Elohim, Madonai, Jah Rastafari, hear I and I, and bless I and I, O Father, his Father, Father of the house of redeemed. Beta Israel. Keep I and I and sanctify I and I all and cause thy Isla face, thy holy face in grace to shine upon I and I, the I children. So I and I shall be saved and redeemed, O the I El Elyon, Adonai Ja Rastafari, El Shaddai. Amen. And amen. Glory to the word. Glory to the sound. Glory to the power. And if we can take a little listen to El Shaddai by I and I, I and I Wendem. Let's see if we can play this particular tune right here, if we can bring it up on the board. And then we'll get into this Torah portion, reading and feeding. There is much to bring forward, but we already know it is written on I and I heart. We just need to pay attention to what's written. So Ross Shiloh, we're going to bring in Ross uh, Shiloh's tune, um, El Shaddai. Uh, if I them can uh, link that. I don't see it on the board over here. I thought that would be appropriate at this particular point. But we don't, uh, we don't cite that here. I don't know if it had to be moved around. All right. So anyway, you know the tune. Check out the tune. We're going to listen to a little bit of Egziavi here, the name of the Stena Yahweh, his uh, primordial name. Lantern, 
محبت سا نگر در رتا به نحاسی آتا چنی سا آنتی یک کتلا لی آنتی مرد او بعد بابا یو چیما لما در یتکبل هو مسخونو یتکبل هو مسخونو کابیت بر رکت انتقالن کابیت بر رکت انتقالن بیت مکدسی کدوس نوا کدوس نو بیت که مانیک نو بیت مکدسی کدوس نو کدوس نو بیت که مانیک نوا به مدر لاجا هولونا به روح باهر وست لالو تست فاچو یه هنی به مدر لاجا هولونا به روح باهر وست لالو تست فاچو یه هنی عمل آتاش and I'm not touching voice of man I'm not touching the night And I'm not touching voice of man Begul beti karao ro chin haat e na haat cho Begul beti karao chin haat e na haat cho Behai lim ta te ka hal Behai lim a ta te ka hal la Ye ba ho ro na dim te ta Ye mo genu ni ma chu he ta Ta na o ta le Ta na o ta le Ta na o ta le Kote amarate ye te te sa Ha ha za ba yi te ne ka ta lu Kote amarate ye te ne sa Ha ha za ba yi te ne ka ta lu Be midra da cham ye mi noru Be midra da cham ye mi noru yi fara lu wa Ye te wa te nina ye ma ta na ma u cha de sa te nya che wa le Midri na wabe nya ha ta wabe nya ha ta te ta ha ti ma Midri na wabe nya ha ta wabe nya ha ta te ta ha ti ma Bela ti ga wa ni mi i ji ga be za Bela ti gwa ha ni mi i ji ga be za Bringing Christ to the nations, the Lutheran Hour. His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I is the 225th reigning monarch of Ethiopia, a descendant of the line which is said to have had its origins in the union of King Solomon of Israel and the Queen of Sheba celebrated in Ethiopian folklore and preserved in the imperial coat of arms. The seal of the house of David, Solomon's father, is there, but not by itself. The cross of Christ, combined with David's emblem, points back to the time when Christianity came to Ethiopia in the 4th century A.D., and to the force which Ethiopia's Coptic Christian tradition has exerted to bind her people together and to shape her culture. Music like that of the crar, which you hear in the background, a four-stringed instrument plucked with the fingers, remains in use to this day. And the countryside is dotted with churches centuries old, many of them carved out of solid rock. It is to Ethiopia itself, and to this Christian tradition, that we want to introduce you today, as the Lutheran Layman's League presents a special program on the celebration of Christmas in Ethiopia featuring an interview with His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia. Addis Ababa, Ethiopia's capital city, means new flower in Amharic, Ethiopia's official language. The city is aptly named. Less than 80 years old, it grew up in Ethiopia's central highlands, to a present-day population of nearly 500,000. I talked with Emperor Haile Selassie in his private office in Jubilee Palace, built in 1955 in the southeast part of Addis Ababa, to commemorate the 25th anniversary of His Imperial Majesty's reign. Although Emperor Haile Selassie speaks excellent English, which is Ethiopia's second language, he answered my questions in Amharic, since state protocol requires him to conduct all official business in the official language. Our first interpreter is Dr. Manasi Haile, Ethiopia's Minister of Information and Tourism. In the background, you can hear children playing in the courtyard of the palace. 
Your Imperial Majesty, it is a great honor to be permitted to speak with you today and also to have you as a guest on this special Christmas program, which will be broadcast to people all over the world. Your Imperial Majesty, what is it that makes you want to follow Jesus Christ? Your Imperial Majesty, how does it seem to you the Apostle Paul meant the statement, faith works by love? What St. Paul said here is not a mistaken statement. You all know what St. Paul was and what kind of work he was engaged in before his conversion. Later on, after his conversion, he had faith and love, and if he had not had that, he would not have taught people this in his epistles. Neither love nor faith are separable from each other. An elaboration of this is Paul's exposition in one of his epistles, which speaks of love and faith. Without love, all of our human efforts in the sight of God can be useless. He loved us, and on our behalf, he was given as a ransom, and it was because of love and his love for us that he accomplished the act of love. Your Imperial Majesty, as a member of the body of Christ, what do you expect of the church? The church is not merely a building. The church is the faithful fulfillment of the Christian life and its requirements. Thus, as the name applies to the building, so is our heart, the church in which God dwells. After our blameless Creator was sent to this world by His Father, then the hearts of all believers became the temple of God. The love of Christ cannot be fathomed by a series of questions and answers, and man's soul cannot experience deeper enrichment as a result. We believe that man can at all times be bound by his love and grace. Your Imperial Majesty, as a member of the body of Christ, what do you feel you can contribute to the life of the church? All men are endowed with natural responsibility. This responsibility is in turn distributed and delegated to all according to his gift, and it is expected of each one to fulfill his responsibility. This responsibility in turn is to God, and thus, for example, one would start his working by asking God to bless the beginning and thank God for a good ending too. We believe that all people, in all of their responsibilities, delegated to them, will begin and finish their work in God's name. I give you a brief answer. If we go on into details, we would have to spend a long time discussing. But it is a magnificent answer, and uh, I am deeply grateful for it. To turn to another subject, Your Imperial Majesty, are there any passages of the Bible that have become especially meaningful to you? I have the highest respect for the Bible as a whole. We also recognize the rightful name the Bible bears. We find that in all the periods of the Old Testament, in the time of patriarchs, kings, and prophets, great miracles were done. On the other hand, the New Testament, in which our Lord himself gave the command to go to all the world and to preach, is also of high value. Then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, in which the sayings of our Lord are recorded, are pillars for all men on the earth. Therefore, the Bible should not be cut into portions. Your Imperial Majesty, as a mature Christian, have you a special word for young people of these days? <laughs> 
On this occasion, I address also all those within our empire. Our Christianity is not restricted to a given church, and I stress above all that we do not wish to make distinctions. My advice to all is to fulfill the Ten Commandments. You are aware of the contents of the Ten Commandments and can elaborate on it. If the nation for which I am the emperor follows and accepts this, since it's also what I accept and follow, I would believe our country is not only historically Christian, but also actively Christian. Imperial Majesty, the birthday of our Lord is observed by peoples throughout the world in various ways, I know. And I should like to ask you how you observe the feast of the nativity of our Lord within your own family and household. The birth of our Lord is a joyous family event. However, I do not only rejoice with my immediate family, since the whole Ethiopian nation is my family. I say this in the context of Christmas being observed by all churches in Ethiopia. I rejoice on this occasion also because of Jesus Christ being given for us. For he was born in the lowly place and got warmed by animals. This fact encourages us to celebrate it with joy. When I have visited the five large continents, I have not been anywhere where there was not a church. All over the world, I have come to know that the birth of Jesus Christ is celebrated. Yes, I. Once again, Salam Tana, fraternal greeting, Salam Tana, Tana is telling. And this is the RSS, Rastafari Sabbatical Studies. It's a double portion, um, fulfilling or concluding, some say, but we'll say fulfilling um, the reading and the feeding, the study of the um, book of Exodus. Well, actually, the reading in this season of the book of Exodus, because the uh, book of Exodus. <clears throat> which is known in the Hebrew as the Sefer or the Cipher, the Sefer uh, Shemot, and Shemot means the name, and Sefer basically would mean the book, but uh, it's really the Cipher. We'll get into that word. That's a very interesting word there, but the, it's called the Sefer Shemot. It story, the narrative of how the family of Yaakov, right, of Jacob, became a great nation and became a great nation in Mitzrayim or out of Mitzrayim, so-called Kemet and so-called Egypt. Now, this narrative, this book, this uh, sefer in the uh, royal Amharic known as the Orit, which is the Ethiopic word for Torah, the Orit, which means of um, uh, Se'at, the Orit, the Sa'at, which is the Torah or the Orit, the perfect example of the coming out. It tells us and it gives us the keys, right, um, that recounts the Hebrew and the family of Jacob, the family of Israel, the Beta Israel's um, experience, but in this area here, in this book, the, the bondage. Now, some talk about slavery. I have a vid that's coming forward based on uh, responding to uh, responding to a Haaret article that I saw within the vid that um, what was it? It was it was uh, Shaka Amos, you know, about the whole Kemet and the Hebrew thing. But it's it's interesting because um, 
in that particular lost one right there, we see a spirit. We see that spirit of Pharaoh. We see this Pharaoh of Exodus. And there's more to that, but let's just touch on this, that the Jews were never slaves, right, in Egypt. You know, the Jews were never slaves. Black or white, the narrative does not talk about that. If you look up Jew in in the English from the King James perspective or the Masoretic, the Hebrew, you won't find it. But it's it, it was in a bond age, a bond age. Um, and we need to explain that. We need to really clarify that because some people are getting, you know, confused about that particular matter and regurgitating um, what um, the supreme delusion of certain um, overly really just or self-righteous um, Gentiles um, have have said among the so-called Christians and Jews, right, and also have uh, um, submitted themselves to the to the, the the so-called racist mindset as well, which has further complicated matters about that. So we really need to clarify that. So in some of the older, it would say enslavement, but we prefer what the scripture says from study, and it was bondage. We need to understand what bondage, like the reggae song, or some of the reggae, the classic uh, root songs that said they took the chain off of our, you know, hands and 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 feet, and they put it on our brain. I there's a particular tune, and some of y'all probably know that tune, no doubt. Um, but I like to say within the inspiration that I, I would give it to I and I, not just off our hands and feet, but they put them on our hearts and our mind. Because remember, man is a tripartite or a trinity. Man was made in the image and after likeness, right, of the one power, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He reveals to us his mystery or his, his secret, right, to his his people and to those who receive. So. The body is one level. You know, what the revelation says, one-third fell from heaven, one-third fell, and we fell into this kind of physical flesh, um, carbon, organic, and, you know, kind of a, a natural. And we we have uh, forgotten, you know, um, our, you know, the spirit, you know, the true spirit and the soul. So we can easily, when we hear enslavement, we're going to think of slavery. But the slavery was completely different but what's interesting is that when the Israelites um went into Egypt or into Mitzrayim more properly so called Kemet and so called Egypt because we have to come from our narrative you know if we really want to make the conviction you know stick in that sense not to regurgitate what we have heard from counterfeit Christianity and pseudo and pseudo Judaism right when they first went in there you know, it was not a bad experience. It was a good experience, right? So we have to recognize the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? But what's interesting is the way we went into, our ancestors went into Mitzrayim is different than how we have come into this spiritual Egypt. Even Father says so within Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. But what's interesting is that the end result, in a sense, is still the same. You know, I mean, if we went in there more as guests, right, and received well, you know, at that time, and we need to acknowledge that. That's why the Father says, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, teach your brother, or an Egyptian, because he's a stranger in his land. So we don't want to be like those, these and those um, so-called Israelites, you know, because many of the Israelites had a problem with the covenant that Yahweh had made with the house of David, like many of the modern Black Hebrews and and Hebrew Israelites uh, all have a, a, a problem receiving that covenant. It's amazing how things uh, change or how times to change, but still the essential. Israelites and the Hebrew, we need to understand that bondage was a spiritual and a psychological and basically a religious bondage, but it was nothing like. In a sense, yeah, there was some, there was some, there was, there was some physical to it, but it, we didn't, we didn't go into Egypt because we were, you know, conquered or captured. You know, that, that's a big difference, or we was enslaved. That's a big difference, and a lot of ones are actually regurgitating the false, the false narrative of um, counterfeit Christianity and pseudo Judaism. But this book also tells of the subsequent deliverance and the the ten plagues. 
by the yod of Yahweh, by the hand of Jehovah or of Jah. Now, Moses leads the people out of Mitzrayim, out of um, so-called uh, Kemet and so-called uh, Egypt, right, crossing the Eritrean Sea or the Red Sea, right? They arrive in um, what today is called Arabia or Sinai, right, where they, which is called the Mountain of Elohim, the Mountain of God, where they receive Torah, where they receive the Orit or the Law. Now, while Moses is on the mountain, you know, when he was on the mountain, Mount Sinai, after the people had made a covenant, you know, and after the book of the covenant was written and it was ratified, put into effect, right, the people, they worship a golden bull calf, right? They, they, they went back to that bullshit. Actually, that's what it was. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Now, the remainder of the book, which we are covering right here, the remainder of this book, the Sefer Shemot, the Orit Zaat, it describes in intricate detail the construction, the instruction, the construct, the structure, and the construction of the Mishkan, and the Mishkan is a Hebrew word means dwelling place, the Maderia, or the, the Maderia and the, the tabernacle or the tent. So then this double, in this year, because of, um, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, um, not a leap. Let me, let me get this right here, get some of the references right here so one can understand why it's a uh, – portion and referring to the book of um the Hebrew book of uh Shemot of the Hebrew book of this Torah portion volume two. PDF is available on the site the RTG Rastafari Foundation and the L O J Society dot org site. So this um double portion of Parashat uh uh Hel and uh Pekude, right, which mean um Gatherings or accountings, uh, gatherings and accountings. Um, in Amharic, uh, Seb Sebo means to gather, he having gathered. And, and that corresponds to where you hell, right, within the Hebrew. That is portion 22. And then portion 23, uh, Pekude, or some would say Pekude, but Pekude um, means counting. So we should think in terms of uh, accounting and counting and accounting. And um, the Amorinia in the Amharic, the royal Amharic of the Metaf Kedus of the line of the tribe of Judah, fulfillment of Revelation 5 in, the, in his majesty's Metaf Kedus is called Ika Dimer, right? And in brackets you might see on the chart it says Yehidno, just to put in the full idea. Ika means a thing and Dimer Dimmer is like the total, like we say, you know, how much, you know, what's the grand total. So so the total, so that's the idea of the counting. Yes and no means this is. Now, this reading um, 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 constitutes, in, in this particular reading from the, from the Torah portion, Exodus 35, verse 1 to Exodus 40, verse 38. In the prophets or the Haftarah, the Nabim or Navim, Nabiyat, which, which is, the, is the Hebrew and the Amharic um, terms of prophet, uh, Kings chapter 7, verse 40 to 50, and 1 Kings chapter 7, verses 51 to 8 and 21, as we usually do, we'll hear the reading from Alexander Scorby of the full chapter. So it'll be 1 Kings, full chapter 7. Um, first Kings, um, full chapter eight. Now the New Testament reading, I'm just going to sum up both of them together since it's a double portion is second Corinthians chapter nine verses, the specific verses for studies, six, 11, first, uh, second Corinthians, I think I said first, but second Corinthians chapter nine verses six to 11 and first Corinthians chapter three verses 11 to 18 along with first Corinthians chapter three verses 16 to 17, and Hebrews chapter 13, the key verse is verse 10, 
so we're going to hear the whole reading, but the main the main um the main um portion, the main portion cited, please make a a note of that, but the context is is very very important. So the reason why um this year, you know, 2015, a Shemitah year, blood moon year. Oh, by the way, I want to announce this. I think in six days, to be six days, days, there's going to be a, a solar um, eclipse. And that's interesting as well when we put that in context with the blood moons and we put that in context with uh, Joel's prophecy and we put that in context with all of the um, signs that we, you know, all the signs of the time, you know, overt and overt. So, so the solar Hebrew calendar, the Ethiopian Hebrew calendar or accounting of time, right, um, contains uh, up to uh, 55 weeks. The exact number varies between 50 and what's called common years. And 54 or 55. Now, the leap years have been 2011, 2014, so called last year. 2016, next year, 2019. Now, Parsha, where Yikahel or Seb Sebo gathered separately in the year, right, all weeks in. Was such a common year 2013, and this year 2015, as well as 2017 and 2018, um, the 22nd Torah portion, Parasha, um, where Yikhel said Sebo, is combined with the next Parasha, um, Pekude, or Pekude, which is called uh, Ikadimer, um, to achieve or to help achieve the proper number of uh, weekly or strong readings and portions. So we complete the cycle. So that adjustment is um, made, and that's the reason that this is a, is a double portion in this uh, Shemitah year, this blood moon year, and um, a major sign that is also mentioned in uh, Joel's uh, prophecy is 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 coming forward. So this is not the fear and the fear. Don't be dismayed by the signs of 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 heavens as the heathen and the nations and those without Jah and without the Moshiach and Jah and his Moshiach son are. But this is just to say, oh wow, look at that, Awu, right? Isn't that what he says right here? So you know, so we can study and show I and I self approve. He says he does nothing unless he first reveals it to his uh, servants, the prophets. And to sons and daughters in Giatai Yesus, in Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, um, much of this material, right, much of what we are going over and we're going to hear is kind of repeated from the earlier description that we have of the Debtara, of the Dinquan, Ethiopic and hard terms, of the Mishkan, the Hebrew term, to really underscore for us the importance right, of the so-called sacrificial system that's represented by the altar, right? And some say as a portent or a forward looking, right, a vision of what is to come of the two advents of the Moshiach or the two advents of Christ. Now, many say, well, these are the two advents of Christ, Yeshua. Well, Yeshua kind of specifically says, you see me but not see me. You know, and he makes that connection with the Father. And if we look at the book of Enoch, Enoch speaks of uh, um, what say his two messiahs, right? And I believe it's two messiahs, Messiah ben Joseph and Messiah ben Avi. We can discuss that. And just to put that right there, so we know it ain't nothing new, but the fulfillment of something true. Now, make a note that Elohim, the power, a conscience, the source commanded Musa, Moses, to assemble, right? That's also the key word, assemble, to gather, to assemble the tabernacle on the first month in the second year. And that's the second year from the date of the Exodus, 
right, on the first day of the month, which is known as Nisan 1, or the Rosh Chodashim, or the new the Hebrew for Ras, Rosh, right, as in Bereshit, in the head, in the Ras, the first words of uh, the Hebrew Bible. Now, refer to the quote right there about the assembly of the tabernacle in Exodus 40 and 17. Now, the new moon of Nisan, right, it marks the beginning of the month of redemption. So Passover or or Fasica is also coming forward, right, regarding the Exodus from its so-called Egypt and and the establishment of the altar of the tabernacle, as well as the greater exodus given through the altar of the Moshiach, through the altar of Christ, right, at the Passover cross, and thus the finding of the true cross, or Meskel, right, the Meskel. Now, a further note, right, is that once the tabernacle was completed, components were accounted for, that's the accounting for the second Torah portion, 23, the peduke, right, or ikadim, right, this is the, the accounting, right, are accounted for and inspected, and he anointed all its components with the sacred anointing oil that is known in Hebrew as the shemen or the shemen ha-mishcha, ha-mishcha, Right? Note that the word Mishcha, right, it comes from the same root in the Hebrew as Moshiach, right, or Chich, uh, indicating the Mishkan or the tabernacle would foreshadow Elohim, right, Hila eyes plan of redemption given in Yeshua, given in Jesus. Moses then formally he initiates now Aaron and his four sons into the Kehenet or the priesthood, marking their hands and their feet with sacrificial blood and quote waving them, right? And we say wave the flag, right? We wave the flag, right, that has those significant redemption colors. Wave right, waving them before Jesus resurrection, you know, if you lift your hands up, lift your hands up, raise those flags, get your lighters up. That's the same essential idea, but most don't know because they haven't studied. But once you see that connection, it's a wonderful revelation. It's a living, it's a liberty revelation. The divine presence, right, or the divine face manifest as the Shekinah or the Shekinah, or some would say the shock and awe, glory, then filled the, the island, right, the Holy of Holies, in the Tent of Meeting. That's also a key right there. It was called the Tent of Meeting, right, the Tent of Meeting. Um, the book of Exodus, it ends or fulfills with these words, right, and Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting cloud. It settled on it. It settled, the cloud has settled on the tent of meeting, and Moses was not able to enter. And the glory, right, of yod Hey we Hey of Yahweh, it filled, he filled, right, the Mishkan, right, the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up, from over the Mishkan, from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel you know, lifted up, right? You know, um, but if the cloud was not taken up, they did not set out till the day that it was taken up. So the cloud was, was that symbol, right? For the cloud of Yahweh was on the Mishkan by day and fire in it by night. So symbols there, and, and those are beautiful symbols and types, and we can see 
if we if 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 we receive his 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 the faith in in the Christ of His Majesty, to whom His Majesty speaks to us in the true and the living faith. We can see that fulfilled in Rastafari. Thus, His Majesty saying to those who, who um, you know, wanted him to rebuke Rastafari, said, "Who am I to deny their faith? Leave them alone. They know what they are doing. As children, we are growing in the grace and in knowledge. Adon, I and I, Adoni, I, Yeshua HaMoshiach, to the glory of the King of Kings, Kadamawi Halasalasi. For He say, for my part, I glory." In the Bible, so um, the 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 cloud by day and the fire by night in the sight of all the house of Israel, the Beta Israel, throughout all of their journeys. Now, the presence of the glory of Elohim of Eli is so key. Right, it's really so key because then we can understand the real intent. This is why His Majesty was asked, and I want to reiterate this part when he was asked, um, "Your uh, shalom, family." Yes, it looks like the Rebbe has cut out um, some technical difficulties going on here in the back end. Let's uh, take a pause for the cause. Shalom. To his many followers, Bob Marley was not just a pop star, but a prophet, the spiritual leader of a religious movement that is fast becoming a political force in the Caribbean. That movement is called Rastafari. And our report, first shown last December, was filmed in Jamaica when Marley was still alive. Rastas believe that Ethiopia was and is the true biblical Israel. Thus, as they see it, blacks were the original chosen people of God, and the Jews are imposters. They say that Jesus Christ was black, and they worship Haile Selassie as the returned Messiah. Africa is their promised land, all other civilization is Babylon, and Babylon's leader, considered by them to be the devil on earth, is the Pope. We kill him every, every, every thought we have, it's just to kill the Pope. Kill him, kill out Rome, kill Babylon. And you're serious about that? Yeah, and the kill, how we're going to kill them though, is with lightning, earthquake, and thunder. Not gun or bayonet, which is Babylon's weapon but with lightning, earthquake, and thunder. Rastaman Arthur Kitchen's Kill the Pope sentiments are shared by Rastas throughout the island. The scene is a hillside on the outskirts of Kingston. The sound is Rastafarian drums, symbolic thunder rolled in daily ritual. Four drum beats aimed at the four corners of the world so no Pope can escape. Babylon will fall is the Rasta man's constant litany. They are praying, hoping, singing for survival and for escape. And I bad. I think holding the phone, I might have touched something, and that had went off right there. I would give thanks to the Wonder Moch, you know what I mean, for playing that clip right there as well. It's an interesting revelation. Um, it, and he said, you know, we're listening, you know, to the you know, once you just got to sign in again, um, and um, you know the whole kill the Pope thing, and you know the thunder and lightning and playing I and I harps. Perhaps that's why they, she mentioned, you know, that's why they created the harp. And I thought, wow, what an interesting revelation right there about that's their harp to, to counter I and I harp. But as the brother and as, the, as those who have gone before us in this truth and life of Adonai and Jai Rastafari have made so clear, you know, it's according to his glory, it's bringing glory. And this is what this Torah portion is speaking about, even though it's mentioning a lot of technical things, 
you know, like, you know, the tabernacle, the size, and so forth and so on. The thing that I and I, I must remember is that all of this is an example, right? All of this is like a, an, a parable, an example of the true living type that I and I is the temple. I and I is a tabernacle, both individually, first and foremostly, right? And then among I and I and we, we align with the Father in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach, not just in the outer sense of, you know, the locks, which are like the Nazarene and, and, and like the people of that time. If you were to see the people of first century, right, the, the, among the Jews especially who were faithful to the Moshiach and, and did follow the Moshiach, right, those who received him, you would say, this is a Rastafari, you know, now it's for his irate, his glory to dwell in I and I in this very same example. And the key is Yeshua HaMoshiach. And I was reading to the eye um, right here, just going over what Dr. Hoffman had asked his majesty. He says, your imperial majesty as a member of the body of Christ, the body of the Messiah, right? We can say the tabernacle. What do you expect, right? of those who are the ones who have been called out. I was saying ecclesia. Ecclesia is the Spanish word um, that's, that's often, you know, used for church, but that comes and is linked with the uh, word. And when you break that word down, ex, they say ex means out of, right? And kalio in the Greek means to be called. So when you bust down the etymology of that, ecclesia means out called ones. They were called out. You know, they were called out, you know, like um, like the like the Bingy Chan, how long Rastafari I call you, you know, how long? You know, now it's whether the I and I answer that call, because these are they who are called, chosen, and have chosen to answer the call. And now in our liberty, in our trot, right, we ask for the grace, you know, to be faithful, right, to he and to, to, to the most I, and to I and I. His Majesty's answer, Kedamawi Haile Selassie Abata Chin's answer was and is and will be that the church is not merely a building. You see, so we're speaking about the tabernacle here, and the tabernacle is, or the Mishkan is not merely a building, or it's not merely, right, it's not merely a, a tent. Right? It's not just merely a tent, not in the eyes and in the eye of the most eye, right, or Selassie eye, right, Ja, Rastafar eye. So it says that the church is not merely, right, the church is not merely a building. Well, so what is the church? According to the teaching of his majesty, this is what we must meditate on and headrest with, right, and, and write on I and I heart and I and I mind. And, and speak word, sound, and power, right, with eye and eye lips, giving glory, right, to his glory in Yeshua's name, that the church is the faithful fulfillment of the Christian life, of the christ in life and its requirements. So our reading and our stuff is to, um, that we become acquainted with, you know, Acquainted with and fulfilled, you know, fulfilled with what is his will, right? We're about to go into the overdrive, and I should have said this from before. I'm getting these these messages over, uh, you know, on the on the host board and everything like that. So we have um, a Wyndham uh, Lid uh, Zawadi reminded me that we have like s about, roughly about six hours. So this is the two hours right here has already is coming up, right? And then we have. We have another, you know, we have another, um, we have another roughly an hour or so. We'll probably regather, hopefully regather roughly around um, um, 1 a.m. So not too sure what time it's going to go. We're about to go into the, you know, the overdrive portion of the first portion for this double portion, the RSS um, number 2225 for the Shemitah year 2015. So you know, I them know that, and those who are able to can um, regather with I and I on the ear and in the Irit, the Irit dwelling in the I tabernacle. 
right? Now, the church is not merely a building, right? The church is the faithful fulfillment of the Christian or the Christ man life and its requirements. So the anointed man, male or female life and its requirement. Thus, as the name applies to the buildings, so is our heart, heartical, right? So is I and I heart, the church in which God, Elohim, Hila'i, dwells in Yeshua's name. After I and I, blameless creator, was sent to this world by his father. So Yeshua, he acknowledged that Yeshua is that et, right, et, you know, that aleph tav that we find within the Hebrew, right, the, the word, right? Yeshua is the logos. He is the word, right? After our blameless creator, was sent to this world by his father, then the hearts of all believers, of all amanyoch, all who are main in spirit and in truth, become the temple or the tabernacle of Elohim, of Hila'i. The love of Hila'i, of Elohim, cannot be fathomed by a series of questions and answers. You know, in many churches they would have the catechumen, you know, the catechism where they give you a whole bunch of questions and answers and everything. And a lot of people learn to memorize questions and answers, but it never really it penetrates their heart and their feeling and their emotion. So it becomes kind of, you know, mechanical. You know, it becomes artificial and not heartical is what he's speaking of here, speaking of the catechumen. And he says, and man's soul cannot experience deeper enrichment as a result. In nominalin, na amen, I and I, amen, or believe, if you please, that men at all times and all I was be bound by his love and grace. Then Dr. Hoffman says this right here, still concerning the church. So the church, write this down in the eyes, no, the church, the true church, right, equals the temple. I and I ought to be the temple where his spirit dwells, his irate dwells, equals the tabernacle. So as we're studying here the tabernacle, these details, which might seem, you know, on a certain level of um, misunderstanding to be just, you know, just a bunch of stuff, takes on greater significance, right, in a new and in the new and the living way. He says, your imperial majesty, as a member of the body of Christ, what do you feel you can contribute to the church, right, as a member of the body of Christ? Because Nagusa Nagas, the king of kings, is the head of the church, right? So because the head is his father, I and I father. Avinu Shabasha Mayim, Abuna Zebe Samayat, Abatachin Hoi Besamai, Yemitanoa, O Ainai Abba, who live in the heavens, the higher heavens, right? And we say the heavens is, is a true mind, you know, in Ainai mind, in the Christ mind. So His Majesty, Haile Selassie I says this What can he contribute to the church? He answers, All men, I, all humanity, are endowed with natural response. Ability or responsibility. This responsibility is in turn distributed and delegated to all according to his gift. And it is expected of each one to fulfill his responsibility. Now, His Majesty is not telling us, in a sense, anything that is new, but he is even clarifying. What it is that we are studying here in the Word when we talk about churchical, when we talk about I and I coming together, I and I doing job works and all of that, he is clarifying it. Because if it's not in this context or in this respect, then it's in disrespect. If it's not in this honor, then it's in dishonor, right? And we're to bring glory to his name, right? So for my part, I glory in the Bible. So he's bringing out even in his the answer, a very refined and simplified, you know, um, you could say um, 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so beautiful. When we, we said this response, and this is connected with this Torah portion right here, as I and I hopefully will be able to um, um, show, at least to your, you know, your, your ear and your heart, those who can receive it. This responsibility is in turn distributed and delegated to all according to his gift, right? His gifts. As each one has gifts. The gifts and the calling of, of, of God are without repentance. So even before we repent, we, we turn around from our astray way and come into the, his way, truth, and life. We already know that many have gifts, right? But according to his gift, and it is expected each one to fulfill his or her responsibility. This responsibility is in turn to Ekaziah to sustain the Yahweh, the true power. And thus, for example, right, one would start his work asking Elohim to bless the beginning and to thank him to give eyes to him for a good ending, a good fulfillment as well. I and I, amen, and nominalen, amen, namin, that all people in all of their responsibilities delegated to them will begin and finish, will alpha and omega, right, um, will ha and pe, right, their work in Elohim's sh- in the hand, right? I gave you brief answer. If we go into detail, we would have to spend a long time discussing. And this is why we often have to spend a long time in a reasoning, iron sharpening iron with one another, and in headresting with the Isla Iron. So Dr. Hoffman then says it is a magnificent answer. And I say amen to Dr. Hoffman's um, amen. And I am deeply grateful for it. And I say amen to that as well. He says right here to turn to another subject or another related subject, your imperial majesty, Gurmawi Nagusa Nagest, are there any passages of the Metzhaf, the Metzhaf Kedus, the book of the holy, called in English the Bible, that have become especially meaningful to you? And Simu, Simu, Shimu, listen, Shema Yisrael. He says, I have the highest respect or honor or glory for the Bible, the Book of the Holy, the Metzhaf Kedus as a whole. We also recognize the rightful name the Bible bears. I think that is interesting there. Search it out. He says, we find that in all periods of the Old Testament, what are we studying here? The Old Testament, right? In the time of the patriarchs, who are we learning of and reasoning on? The patriarchs as well as the matriarchs. Kings and prophets, great miracles were done. On the other hand, right, the time in which Getachin himself, Adonenu himself, Adonai himself, gave the command to go to all the world, and to preach, to proclaim word, sound, and power is also of high value. Then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's interesting in this Torah portion where Moses initiates uh, um, Aaron into the priesthood, right, that he has how many sons, four sons? I think that's kind of interesting right there. Um, The four Gospels, in which the sayings of Getachin, Ainai Gita, Ainai Adonai are recorded, are pillars, <coughs> are pillars for all men uh, on the earth. And remember, we was touching on the pension money, the silver, and how the silver will be used for the base of the pillars in the tabernacle. You know what I mean? And Ainai are to be pillars, and those we give a new name to, they. will is, right, in the temple of his God, in the tabernacle of his God, right, and he will give them the new name. So that's key there, the pillars, right? Therefore, the Bible should not be cut into portions. Now, some would say, well, we're studying this in portions. Before one, get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. It's not, the question was, are there any favorite passages, right? You know, some people say they love one part of the Bible more than anything else. They, they can't take anything else. Well, they are they are partially blind, right? Um, yes, my brothers and and sisters, just wanted to share that there 
that this um, Torah portion and, and your studies on this can even, you know, one can have a higher, you know, a higher, a higher definition in the most high of these things right here. So to complete this part, this kind of an intro right here, um, and whether we start now or maybe in the new portion to here, right, um, that the presence of the glory of Elohim that descended upon Sinai, upon the newly livicated Mishkan or, or tabernacle, just like we, if we're newly livicated, right, in the liberty, right, we represent, represent a climatic, a high, high moment for this fledgling nation, this group of people, I and I, right? Since the Hatiyat, the missing of the mark or the folly, right, or the effery of the golden bull calf, that BS had jeopardized whether Elohim, Haila I, would indeed dwell in the midst of the camp of Israel. Recall that it was only after Moses right, had returned from Sinai bearing the second set of tablets, which it was on Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, Atonement, that the glow of Yahweh's, of Jah's redeeming love radiated from his face. The new hope, the new expectation was given to Israel, and all of this was to prefigure, to give an example, to give a mythos, or to give a, um, a symbolic, parabolic example, right? So it was a myth. You could say a myth. This doesn't offend us who understand what it is. Prefiguring the new covenant is whether ones can fulfill, right, the will, right, and live out. That And that's why he talks about the miracle, right? You know, the miracle, that amazing thing that he does in his grace. So the king of glory, that same psalm that we chant, 20, what, fourth psalm, that Shabbat psalm that talks about the king of glory would accompany the people from Sinai to the promised land. Now, the narrative continues in the book of Numbers, beginning exactly one month after the Mishkan, right, was assembled. Now, this is a matter about the, you know, the Shabbat Para that we can touch on, but just to keep it on this particular subject matter, you know, this now brings out how do we fulfill that word, right, where it says that we are the tabernacle. You know, many people can say, yeah, I'm the tabernacle, God dwells in me, and they can have their own ideas of tabernacle. That's what the, that's what the Israelites had did in that golden calf BS, you know, that's basically what they had done as well. You know, so what Moses did, right, was to, um, you know, um, speak to the Israelites and, and to tell them to build the tabernacle, right? And Moses started by reminding them in the first part of this route. And we've touched on this before, and just to reference this, that so does his majesty as well. The Shabbat is very important. Rest for his people is very important because it's only in resting in spirit, in soul, and in body that one can be fully blessed through his Isla Irit, right, and through the Isla Irit of the son, of his son, right? So then Moses told them to give gifts of materials from those whose heart, right, so move them, from those whose heart so move them. Not just give a gift because somebody else give a gift and you want to outdo somebody else and you're in some sort of competition with your fellow eye, you have taken your eyes off of the most eye, right? Then Moses told them to collect gifts of materials from those whose hearts so move them, right? Free will, as we speak about free will, right? And these gifts were gifts of gold and silver and copper and colored yarns and fine linen and goat's hair and tanned ram skins and acacia wood and olive oil and spices and one of my favorites, the lapis lazuli, right? Or that kind of sapphire, that true blue, that true blue black, 
right, and other stones. Now, each of these stones have their spiritual and metaphysical um, 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 meaning and application if one is able, you know, to cross over, you know, truly be a, 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 Ibri, a, Ibri, right, a Hebrew. Okay, there's no H in Hebrew in Hebrew, and there's no H in Hebrew in Amharic, and we want to bring that out as well. Moses invited all who were skilled, all who had some gift, right, all who had some calling to make the tabernacle, right, as our gathering, as our coming together here and there and everywhere in his irate is also the metaphysical tabernacle or the body of the Moshiach, right, to make the tabernacle, its furnishings, and the priest's vestments, the, pre, the, the priestical clothing, right? Because clothing does matter as well, brothers and sisters. Not for one to get all bent out of shape about it, but there's a verse in the scripture that says he will punish all the king's children that are wearing strange clothing. More so when we know what's going on with a lot of these, um, you know, the things, these microfibers and other things they're putting in clothing to do everything to stop the rise of the black messiah or the lapis lazuli messiah. Now, the Beta Israel brought the gifts that Moses requested, so they responded to that responsibility with their gifts. You see the connection between this Torah portion of the, the King of Kings, Abba, teaches us, and, and actually he also commands us, too, in there as well, right? Moses announced that Elohim Hila'i had singled out one particular, well, actually two, but one first, um, Bezalel or Bezalel in the shadow of Hila'i, right? And Ohali, oh, Oholiab, right? Oholiab, whose name means um, my tent, his father. Oholi means, um, the highly, Oholi means my tent, and Ab means father to endow them with the skills needed to construct the tabernacle. So Moses had already had announced to them now in this portion, now we, it, that's why it says a repeat a little bit of what went on before, because what went on before is that split screen. He's up in the mountain receiving all these gracious instructions for the um, construction of the structure, right, and the people are doing it their own way. Right? I think, oh, we know what the tabernacle is. Yeah, we was in Egypt. We know how to do church. We, 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 yeah. We're not doing it his way, right? Not giving glory to his glory, right? Do we do that? Have we done that? Let's repent, have a change of mind, and do it Yahweh, right? And Moses called on them and all skilled persons to undertake the task. This is the part that the Holy Spirit brought out. To I and I, even for I and I, this is where we're at, right? Calling on all those who know they have a gift, you know, and though they, <clears throat> excuse me, though they might be weak, as it were, you understand? They know that um, they can do all things through the Messiah, through Christ, even Christ and his kingly character who strengthens them. So he called on all skilled persons to do what? To undertake the task, right? No force. You know, no man, nobody do nothing, you understand? But those who know they have skills and come forward to fulfill the will. So the Beta Israel brought more than was needed. You know, they brought more than was needed. So Moses proclaimed an end to the collection. Can you imagine that? The Israelites brought more than was needed. They, their hearts were so moved. I mean, after all, look at the sequence of events, right? Now, the skilled workers, the workers, Right, the, the 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 gifted workers, and even for us in the new covenant, the Adis Kidan, right? Um, those who have received those gifts, right, must fashion the temple, the tabernacle, right, both amongst I and amongst I and I. In other words, both in the I, preparing the I own temple, right. This is why when we talk about, you know. Um, you know, the temple and even the Aital on a certain level, not to get pharisaical or fanatical about it, let's understand that connection. You know, that it's like a double, it's like a double, a double, um, a duality, both I with the most I in Yeshua and through Isis, Jesus Christos, 
right? And then with I and I. It can't begin with I and I, like horizontally before, with the most high in that vertical sense of the true order. You know, that the head of every man is Christ, you know, and the head of Christ, right, is the father. And, of course, the head of the, man, the, head of the woman, right, is the man whose head is Christ. You know, that's the key right there, right? You just can't pick that these things out of place because then you also fall out of grace. So the skilled workers fashion the tabernacle. And um, Bitzal uh, El, right, or Bezal El, he made, check out what Bezal El made. He made the ark. He made the cover. He made the table. He made the menorah, which is the lampstand. Right, he made the Aishan's altar, which is very key. The Aishan's altar, the great worship. So it shows that even um, maybe our unconsciously being children and growing, right? We know there's a connection with the Aishan's, right? But as we study even the Aishan's altar, right, and study His way, then it'll become more clear to us Yahweh and Jah's true way, right? The altar of sacrifices, the laver, and the enclosure for the tabernacle, right, for the tabernacle right there. So we're going to begin and open up on Exodus chapter 35. I know after this extended, you know, this extended um, um, beginning, and I know some ones and ones I should have mentioned that, as Brother mentioned that, you know, of course try to stay on the line, but you know how this technology, technology, you know, but even if, you know, ones do sign off if you can and you can't call forward in, you know, um, don't vex, don't stress who Jah has blessed and know and receive Jah's blessing in Yeshua's name. So Exodus 35 and 1 and opens with, and Moses assembled, or Moses sabisabo, Moses gathered, uh, um, where yikhel Moshe. Right, And this is an echo, actually, of Exodus 32 and 1, which says, and the people assembled. You notice that? Because the people said, we don't know what's up with this Moses. Right? Or, where yikahel ha'am. Where yikahel ha'am in the Hebrew means, and the people assembled. And they assembled to do what? You know, to, to do it their own way. Right? Um, and they went astray, and many were slain. Right? Exodus 35 and 3, it prohibits the kindling fire on the Sabbath, right? The kindling fire on the Sabbath. Now, many would think, oh, man, so that means we're not supposed to have no heat, so don't turn on any fire, don't warm the bottle for the baby, just do all that like that. No, fire, you know, for the people kindling the fire, you know, fire has a positive, right? He doesn't prevent us from anything for our enjoyment, but it's a negative sense of fire. Don't kindle no loose fire. Don't kindle Lucifer, Don't you know, especially on the Sabbath, you know, the loose fire. Now, Numbers 15, 32 to 33 reports that when the Israelites came upon a gathering, um, gathering, a man gathering wood on the Sabbath, apparently with the intent um, to fuel a fire, they brought him to Moses, Aaron, and the community, and they placed him in custody because it had not been declared what should be done to him, right? That's, ex that's Numbers 15 and 34. Now, clearing up any uncertainty about whether the man had violated the law, Elohim told Moses that the whole community was to pelt him with stones outside the camp, and they did. Now, people would take that for the new covenant. But we have to remember that if the old covenant was glorious, the new covenant is even more glorious. Now, we can touch on that and, this, and the next thing, but right now, my brothers and sisters, thank you for your patience and your attention in just bringing out a little bit of that context. The tabernacle is a, is a very... It has a very, very important um, meaning for us if we receive it, not just physically, right, study it, but also um, metaphysically or eritically in spirit and in truth. So without any further um, further delay, we're going to go forward into a hearing of the reading of this um, previous um, um, Strong's uh, Torah portion um, Number 22 to 23 will begin with where uh, Yikhal, right, or Sabisabo, and Moses gathered. So, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahab. 
and Yeshua Shem. Chapter 35 And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together, and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded, that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger's skins and shittim wood and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. And every wise-hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord hath commanded, the tabernacle, his tent, and his covering, his tatches and his boards, his bars, his pillars and his sockets, the ark and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering, the table and his staves and all his vessels, and the showbread, the candlestick also for the light, and his furniture, and his lamps with the oil for the light, and the incense altar and his staves, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the hanging for the door at the entering in of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with his brazen grate, his staves, and all his vessels, the labor and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars and their sockets, and the hanging for the door of the court, the pins of the tabernacle, and the pins of the court, and their cords, the cloths of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. And they came, every one whose heart stirred him up, and every one whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service, and for the holy garments. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted, and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold. And every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and red skins of rams and badger's skins brought them. Every one that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering. And every man with whom was found shitting wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the women that were wise-hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. And the rulers brought onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastplate, and spice, and oil for the light, and for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise curious works, to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in the cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of wood, to make any manner of cunning work. And he hath put in his heart that he may teach, both he and Aholiab, the son of Ahissamach of the tribe of Dan. Then hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple, in scarlet and in fine linen, and of the weaver, even of them that do any work, and of those that devise cunning work. Chapter 36 Then wrought Bezalel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man, in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that the Lord had commanded. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even every one whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary, to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. 
And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twined linen, and blue and purple and scarlet, with cherubims of cunning work made he them. The length of one curtain was twenty and eight cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits. The curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains one unto another, and the other five curtains he coupled one unto another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain from the selvage in the coupling. Likewise, he made in the uttermost side of another curtain in the couplings of the second. Fifty loops made he in one curtain, and fifty loops made he in the edge of the curtain which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain to another. And he made fifty tatches of gold, and coupled the curtains one unto another with the tatches. So it became one tabernacle. And he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains he made them. The length of one curtain was thirty cubits, and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. The eleven curtains were of one size. And he coupled five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops upon the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling, and fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain which coupleth the second. And he made fifty tatches of brass to couple the tent together, that it might be one. And he made a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering of badger skins above that. And he made boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood, standing up. The length of a board was ten cubits, and the breadth of a board one cubit and a half. One board had two tenons, equally distant one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side southward, and forty sockets of silver he made under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made twenty boards. And there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward, he made six boards. And two boards made he for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they were coupled beneath, and coupled together at the head thereof, to one ring. Thus he did to both of them in both the corners. And there were eight boards, and their sockets were sixteen sockets of silver, under every board two sockets. And he made bars of shittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the sides westward. And he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to the other. And he overlaid the boards with gold, and made their rings of gold to be places for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. And he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen, with cherubims made he it of cunning work. And he made thereunto four pillars of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold, and he cast for them four sockets of silver. And he made an hanging for the tabernacle door of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of needlework. And the five pillars of it were their hooks, and he overlaid their chapiters and their fillets with gold but their five sockets were of brass. Chapter 37 And Bezaleel made the ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it, even two rings upon the one side of it, and two rings upon the other side of it. And he made staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, to bear the ark. And he made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was the length thereof, and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two cherubims of gold, beaten out of one piece made he them, on the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub on the end on this side, and another cherub on the other end on that side. Out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims spread out their wings on high, and covered with their wings over the mercy seat, with their faces one to another. Even to the mercy seatward were the faces of the cherubims. 
and he made the table of shittim wood. Two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold, and made thereunto a crown of gold round about. Also he made thereunto a border of an handbreadth round about, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold, and put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. Over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves to bear the table. And he made the staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold to bear the table. And he made the vessels which were upon the table, his dishes and his spoons and his bowls and his covers to cover with all, of pure gold. And he made the candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work made he the candlestick, his shaft and his branch, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers were of the same. And six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. Three bowls made after the fashion of almonds in one branch, a knop and a flower, and three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knop and a flower. So throughout the six branches going out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick were four bowls made like almonds, his knops and his flowers, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knops and their branches were of the same. All of it was one beaten work of pure gold. And he made his seven lamps, and his snuffers, and his snuff dishes of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold made he it, and all the vessels thereof. And he made the incense altar of shittim wood. The length of it was a cubit, and the breadth of it a cubit. It was four square, and two cubits was the height of it. The horns thereof were of the same. And he overlaid it with pure gold, both the top of it and the sides thereof round about, and the horns of it. Also he made unto it a crown of gold round about. And he made two rings of gold for it under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it, upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staves to bear it withal. And he made the staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he made the holy anointing oil, and the pure incense of sweet spices, according to the work of the apothecary. Chapter 38 And he made the altar of burnt offering of shittim wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth thereof. It was four square, and three cubits the height thereof. And he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it. The horns thereof were of the same, and he overlaid it with brass. And he made all the vessels of the altar, the pots and the shovels and the basins and the flesh hooks and the fire pans. All the vessels thereof made he of brass. And he made for the altar a brazen grate of network under the compass thereof beneath unto the midst of it. And he cast four rings for the four ends of the grate of brass to be places for the staves. And he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves into the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it withal. He made the altar hollow with boards. And he made the laver of brass, and the foot of it of brass, of the looking-glasses of the women assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he made the court. On the south side southward the hangings of the court were of fine twined linen and hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and their brazen sockets twenty. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the north side the hangings were an hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and their sockets of brass twenty, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the west side were hangings of fifty cubits, their pillars ten, and their sockets ten, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the east side eastward fifty cubits. The hangings of the one side of the gate were fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And for the other side of the court gate, on this hand and that hand, were hangings of fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. All the hangings of the court round about were of fine twined linen, and the sockets for the pillars were of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver, and the overlaying of their chapiters of silver, and all the pillars of the court were filleted with silver. And the hanging for the gate of the court was needlework of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen, and twenty cubits was the length, and the height in the breadth was five cubits, answerable to the hangings of the court. And their pillars were four, and their sockets of brass four, their hooks of silver, and the overlaying of their chapiters and their fillets of silver. And all the pins of the tabernacle and of the court round about were of brass. This is the sum of the tabernacle, even of the tabernacle of testimony, 
as it was counted, according to the commandment of Moses, for the service of the Levites, by the hand of Ithamar, son to Aaron the priest. And Bezaleel the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. And with him was Aholiab, son of Ahissamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver, and a cunning workman, and an embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and fine linen. All the gold that was occupied for the work and all the work of the holy place, even the gold of the offering, was twenty and nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver of them that were numbered of the congregation was an hundred talents and a thousand seven hundred and three score and fifteen shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. A beaker for every man, that is, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary for every one that went to be numbered from twenty years old and upward, for six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty men. And of the hundred talents of silver were cast the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil, and hundred sockets of the hundred talents, a talent for a socket. And of the thousand seven hundred seventy and five shekels he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their chapiters and filleted them. And the brass of the offering was seventy talents, and two thousand and four hundred shekels. And therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the brazen altar, and the brazen grate for it, and all the vessels of the altar, and the sockets of the court round about, and the sockets of the court gate, and all the pins of the tabernacle, and all the pins of the court round about. Chapter 39 and of the blue and purple and scarlet they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place, and made the holy garments for Aaron, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen. And they did beat the gold into thin plates, and cut it into wires to work it in the blue and in the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen with cunning work. They made shoulder pieces for it to couple it together, by the two edges was it coupled together. And the curious girdle of his ephod that was upon it was of the same, according to the work thereof, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they wrought onyx stones enclosed in ouches of gold, graven, as signets are graven, with the names of the children of Israel. And they put them on the shoulders of the ephod, that they should be stones for a memorial to the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the breastplate of cunning work, like the work of the ephod, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen. It was four square. They made the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof, and a span the breadth thereof, being doubled. And they set in it four rows of stones. The first row was a sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This was the first row. And the second row, an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve, according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name, according to the twelve tribes. And they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreathen work of pure gold. And they made two ouches of gold and two gold rings, and put the two rings in the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two wreathen chains they fastened in the two ouches, and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And they made two rings of gold, and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the border of it, which was on the side of the ephod inward. And they made two other golden rings, and put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath, toward the forepart of it, over against the other coupling thereof, above the curious girdle of the ephod. And they did bind the breastplate by his rings unto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, that it might be above the curious girdle of the ephod, and that the breastplate might not be loosed from the ephod, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue. And there was an hole in the midst of the robe, as the hole of an habergeon, with a band round about the hole, that it should not rend. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twined linen. And they made bells of pure gold, and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe, round about between the pomegranates, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, round about the hem of the robe, to minister in, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they made coats of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and for his sons, and a mitre of fine linen, 
and goodly bonnets of fine linen, and linen breeches of fine twined linen, and a girdle of fine twined linen, and blue and purple and scarlet of needlework, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold, and wrote upon it a writing like to the engravings of a signet, Holiness to the Lord. And they tied unto it a lace of blue, to fasten it on high upon the mitre, as the Lord commanded Moses. Thus was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation finished. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So did they. And they brought the tabernacle unto Moses, the tent and all his furniture, his tatches, his boards, his bars, and his pillars, and his sockets, and the covering of ram skins dyed red, and the covering of badger skins, and the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony, and the staves thereof, and the mercy seat, the table, and all the vessels thereof, and the showbread, the pure candlestick with the lamps thereof, even with the lamps to be set in order, and all the vessels thereof, and the oil for light, and the golden altar, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the hanging for the tabernacle door, the brazen altar, and his grate of brass, his staves, and all his vessels, the laver, and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars, and his sockets, and the hanging for the court gate, his cords, and his pins, and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of the congregation, the cloths of service to do service in the holy place, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and his son's garments, to minister in the priest's office. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel made all the work. And Moses did look upon all the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded. Even so had they done it. And Moses blessed them. Chapter 40 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony, and cover the ark with the veil. And thou shalt bring in the table, and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring in the candlestick, and light the lamps thereof. And thou shalt set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony, and put the hanging of the door to the tabernacle. And thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt set the laver between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and shalt put water therein. And thou shalt set up the court round about, and hang up the hanging at the court gate. And thou shalt take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle, and all that is therein, and shalt hallow it, and all the vessels thereof, and it shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering, and all his vessels, and sanctify the altar, and it shall be an altar most holy. And thou shalt anoint the laver and his foot, and sanctify it. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and wash them with water. And thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments, and anoint him, and sanctify him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons, and clothe them with coats. And thou shalt anoint them, as thou didst anoint their father, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus did Moses. According to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. And Moses reared up the tabernacle, and fastened his sockets, and set up the boards thereof, and put in the bars thereof, and reared up his pillars. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle, and put the covering of the tent above upon it, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he took and put the testimony into the ark, and set the staves on the ark, and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle, and set up the veil of the covering, and covered the ark of the testimony, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the side of the tabernacle northward without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward. And he lighted the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle. And he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering 
as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set the laver between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and put water there to wash withal. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the congregation, and when they came near unto the altar, they washed, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation, because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel, throughout all their journeys. The end of the second book of Moses, called Exodus. Amen, amen. Um, this is an update, brothers and sisters, the first part of this uh, double portion, RSS um, number 22 to 23, this partial overview presentation is about to conclude in a couple of minutes and we kindly ask the item to um join us at the top of the the hour um one AM um on the east, you know, on the eastern time. I know we're in different time zones, but at the beginning of the hour. So um not knowing exactly when it's gonna go off, we're just gonna go on the outro with uh Burhan Salasi Salasi is the chapel, the true church, the church of the firstborn. Adonai, Jot, Rastafari, Kedamawi, Hala Salasi is true church. I and I. Amen. is the